At exactly 11.47 a.m., the noise at the Dubai Air Show stopped. It wasn't a planned silence. It was a collective gasp. Russia's Su-57 had just arrived. It didn't book a prime slot. It didn't send out press releases. It just appeared. For years, Western engineers have mocked this aircraft. They pointed at its exposed screws. They laughed at its panel gaps. But mostly, they pointed at the engines. They said these round, exposed engine nozzles were a fatal mistake, a design failure that made the jet visible to radar and doomed it in a modern war. They called it fake stealth. But 90 seconds after takeoff, that design failure did something the American F-22 cannot do. It performed a maneuver that defied aerodynamics. It executed a pancake flat spin, rotating 360 degrees on its vertical axis while maintaining almost zero forward speed at just 350 meters altitude. Most fighters would stall and crash instantly. The Su-57 didn't. And suddenly, the defense analysts realized something terrifying. The exposed engines weren't a mistake. They were a trap. This is why the Su-57's bad design is actually genius. To understand why the Su-57 is built this way, you have to understand the religion of Western air power. Stealth. Since the 1980s, American doctrine has been simple. First look, first shot, first kill. If the enemy can't see you, they can't kill you. American engineers spend billions of dollars hiding heat signatures. Take the F-22 Raptor. Its engine nozzles are rectangular. They are buried deep inside the airframe. This shape hides the infrared heat signature from heat-seeking missiles and scatters radar waves from behind. It is a masterpiece of low observability. Its rear radar cross-section is estimated to be 0.01 square meters, about the size of a marble. Now look at the Su-57. It has two massive, round, shiny metal tubes sticking out the back. To a stealth engineer, this looks like a crime scene. From the rear aspect, this jet has a radar cross-section of nearly one square meter. That is 100 times larger than the F-22. This is why critics call it a 4.5 generation fighter. They argue that Russia simply couldn't afford to build sophisticated stealth nozzles. They assume it was a failure of budget and engineering. But that assumption is dangerous because it ignores one simple fact. Russia knows how radar works. They didn't leave the engines exposed because they couldn't hide them. They left them exposed because they needed them to move. This is thrust vectoring. It's the ability to point the engine exhaust in a different direction to push the aircraft. The American F-22 has thrust vectoring, but because its nozzles are rectangular to hide the heat, they are mechanically limited. They can only move up and down, pitch only. It's like a car that can steer, but only forward and backward. The Su-57's bad round nozzles? They are fully articulated 3D vectoring nozzles powered by the AL-41F1 engines, each producing 33,000 pounds of thrust. They can move up, down, left, right, and, crucially, they can move independently of each other. This is what allows the pancake flat spin. One engine points up, the other points down and left. The aircraft rotates on a dime while falling out of the sky, keeping its nose pointed at the enemy the entire time. In a beyond visual range fight, stealth is king. But if that fight gets close, if the missiles miss and the jets merge, stealth doesn't matter anymore. You can see each other. At that moment, the F-35, with no thrust vectoring, is a sluggish computer. The F-22 is limited to pitch. But the Su-57 is a knife fighter. Russian doctrine assumes that stealth will eventually fail. Radars will get better. Quantum radar is coming. And when stealth fails and the fight becomes visual, the jet with the rectangular nozzles dies. The jet with the round bad nozzles wins. But super maneuverability isn't the only trade-off. There is a secret hidden in the cheeks of the Su-57 that almost no one talks about. Most fifth-generation fighters suffer from tunnel vision. Their radar looks forward. To guide a missile to a target, they have to point their nose at the enemy. This is dangerous. Pointing your nose at the enemy means flying towards the enemy. 
It closes the distance and puts you in range of their missiles. The Su-57 has secondary X-band radar arrays mounted on the sides of the fuselage. This is a feature unique to this aircraft. It has a total of five separate radar arrays with over 2,500 transmit modules, compared to the F-35 single array of 1,200 modules. Why? Because of a tactic called beaming. Beaming is when a pilot turns 90 degrees to the enemy radar. Because of the Doppler notch effect, radar struggles to track an object moving sideways. When a jet flies directly perpendicular to a radar source, it can momentarily disappear from the screen because the radar filters it out as background clutter. The Su-57 can fire a missile, turn 90 degrees to become invisible to enemy radar via the Doppler notch, and still guide its own missile to the kill using its cheek radars. It can guide a weapon while flying away from the fight. The F-22 cannot do this. The F-35 cannot do this. The Su-57's cluttered design allows it to carry sensors that Western designers stripped out to save weight and clean lines. Even the way it fires weapons breaks Western rules. Western jets have cramped internal bays. To fire, they have to open doors, use hydraulic arms to push the missile out, and then close the doors. The F-22's bay doors take between 1.2 and 1.8 seconds to cycle. For nearly two seconds, the stealth geometry is broken and the jet is visible to radar. Russian engineers designed the Su-57's bays with high-pressure pneumatic actuators. They open and close in 0.6 seconds. It might seem like a small difference, but in a hypersonic missile fight, that one second of radar visibility is the difference between living and dying. The Su-57 also has bays that are 19% longer, allowing it to carry cruise missiles that simply do not fit inside an F-35. This isn't just theory. While the F-22 has spent most of its life patrolling peaceful borders, the Su-57 has been quietly deployed to the most active war zone on Earth. Between 2018 and 2019, Russia deployed Su-57s to Syria. They claimed it was for evaluation. But flight logs suggest something else. They flew 78 combat sorties. They were hunting. They were testing their sensors against real Western air defense systems. They were listening to the electronic signatures of F-35s flying nearby. And they were testing a controversial technology hidden in the wings, L-band radar. Western stealth is optimized to defeat X-band radar, the type used for targeting. It is physically impossible to hide from L-band radar, which uses longer wavelengths, but L-band is usually too inaccurate to get a lock. Russian engineers claim they have solved this. On March 17, 2022, rumors circulated that a Su-57 allegedly achieved a radar lock on an Israeli F-35 over Lebanon at a range of 95 kilometers. Israel never confirmed it, but for six weeks after that date, they altered their flight patterns near Syria. If you enjoy seeing engineering DeFi expectations like this, make sure to hit subscribe. If the reports are true, Russia was validating their counter-stealth philosophy. They aren't trying to hide, they are trying to see the invisible. But we have to be honest, this genius comes with a heavy price. The Su-57 is not perfect. Those incredible 3D vectoring engines, they are unreliable. During the Syria deployment, engine reliability fell below 85 percent. The nozzles wear out quickly from the extreme heat and stress of vectoring. Moscow is scrambling to fix this. They are accelerating the Item 30 engine program, which promises better reliability and serrated stealth nozzles. But that won't reach mass production until 2027. Until then, the Su-57 is a glass cannon. Deadly, brilliant, but fragile. The Su-57 is not the stealthiest plane in the world. If you measure it by American standards, it fails. But Russia didn't build it to pass American tests. They built it to kill American planes. They traded invisible for agile. They traded clean lines for a situational awareness. They bet that in the chaos of real war, being able to turn, see, and shoot from any angle is worth more than being a ghost. The round engines aren't a flaw. They are a fist, and in Dubai, the world finally saw the punch coming. But Russia isn't the only nation rewriting the rulebook. 
Japan took the legendary American F-16 and completely redesigned it to survive a war over the Pacific. Click here to see why Japan built their own F-16 and why it might be better than the original.